What's going on guys? My name is Josh and I'm the head of Shopify here at Ecom Freedom. Now in this video, what I want to cover is the importance of testing creatives continuously when you're running ads on Facebook, TikTok, or wherever. Creative is king. And when I went and kind of allowed myself to get a little bit complacent, I want to show you guys the pitfalls of that complacency as well in this video. And I hope that from, you know, my mistakes that you're able to learn and make sure that you don't make these mistakes as well, or at least have something to remember. It's like, oh yeah, I feel like I'm getting a little bit complacent. I remember what happened in that video and as a result maybe you don't and you start actually going and getting new creatives and testing more and more so let me just show you guys exactly what i'm talking about and this all pretty much began in quarter four of 2022 right everything was great everything was peachy up until october as you can see right from here on this little graph you can see that wow our sales were like pretty low comparatively right and and just as a comparison for comparison's sake let's just go back right let's just go back the next couple the previous couple of months like august and september and you're going to see like on average we were going anywhere between seven to you know upwards to like 10 right 11 that kind of mark for this store to do well right we want it to have about revenue per day at like 8000 plus right now with this particular store what happened was that our creatives dried up and although we have a team of designers and video editors on our team what actually happens is that if we we neglected the fact of taking new content right taking pictures right making it thematically relevant to the season that we're in uh, we also stopped kind of looking for UGC, right? We start, stopped looking for, you know, new faces to the brand that we could push ad spend on because for a brand that goes and, you know, generates like eight to 10,000, 12,000 a day, most cases, right? They're spending a lot of money, right? For this particular brand, and we spend about anywhere between four to $5,000 uh, in order to generate that. So we, we try to hit and aim for about a two, 2.5, three times return on ad spend. Anything above a 1.4 is profitable for us. However, we kind of want like to have that little bit of buffer and we don't want to become complacent and say, oh yeah, if 1.4 is what we want, you know, we're going to just leave it at 1.6, right? Like, like that's not what we want. But so as you can see, right, the average of, you know, the last monthly revenue for September, for example, right, was 200 grand, $207,000. But let's go to October. And this is kind of where like the complacency really kicked in. Boom, just like that. We lost, you know, $50,000, right? It, it was crazy. Or well, I think uh, more closer to, you know, $44,000 or whatever it is. In essence, that's the price that you pay for complacency. So I want to kind of to walk you guys through what I went ahead and did and the process that um, we had to go through in order to crawl out of this. And, you know, our Q4 wasn't that, you know, crash hot uh, for this particular brand, right? Like you see 196 for November, but still lower than the, you know, uh, September month, right? Which is a bit of a problem in my, in my, my, my eyes. December, a bit better, 224, right? Because the complacency started to go away and we started to really, you know, get our butts into gear. And then, you know, the, the last couple of weeks, right? The last, the first two weeks of January, we've been doing pretty well as well, right? You can see here, like, you know, 12, our average is actually a little bit higher and there is no more 4K days, nothing like that, right? We're, we're lowest is, you know, 7.2 and the highest being, you know, 13,000. So this is where, you know, we're seeing the fruits of our labor for the last couple of months. In the first, you know, two months, um, sorry, the two uh, weeks, we're on track to actually make, you know, 300,000 this month, right? Which is just, you know, fantastic. The way that we did this was, we understood that our creatives were drying up. We didn't have any time to go out and source new creators. We didn't really trust, uh, you know, the providers on Billow anymore, just because we've had really bad experiences over the last couple of months. You know, whether it be you know just new creators coming in, not really understanding what's going on, what works for ads, it just wasn't doing so well, and we didn't have the time to go out and search. Secondly, we also 
kind of was struggling because our graphic designers were they burnt out, right? We we didn't have new content, we didn't have anything to kind of give them inspiration to do better, to to um, you know create better content for in which we could go ahead and run ads for. The first two things that we went ahead and did is one, we reached out to a, a good friend of ours that you know, helps with UGC stuff. So um, we actually went back and reinvested money back into this service, something like two to three grand, right? Depending on how many pieces of content you want. And they give you like three different UGC creators that are trained with them specifically. And this was just absolutely game changing for us because for us, like that cost was, you know, nominal. It made up for itself. It paid itself over multiple times. That's the first thing, right? We went ahead and we said, hey, uh, friend, can you please go ahead and help us find UGC, right? So they vetted, they trained, and they created the content with all the edits in place as well. We made sure that those hooks were just absolutely fantastic. The second thing that we went ahead and did was that we went and we were like, man, all of our still images are so bland still. They're so bland. So we need to go and we booked a whole day just to take like 300 plus different photos of models using our products in different ways with their partners and with their families, right? Just to liven up the brand a little bit, right? Create some, you know, flair, add some spice to it all. And then from that, our graphic designers were able to go on a frenzy and go and create like a ton of new creatives every single week. Fast forward to where we are now. Every single month, we have at least six to 12 different creatives coming through in terms of UGC. So we spend, you know, anywhere from three to $6,000 just on ad creatives. However, the benefit of this is that it allows us to scale this so much uh, faster. And because we have, you know, a, a proven record and very, you know, good margins, if we're able to to just achieve something above a 1.3, we're pretty happy. And uh, this month has been a, a f absolutely great, fantastic month for us. The next thing that we were able to do, and uh, that's the one I, I wanna kind of show you guys, is our graphic designers are able to just go ahead and every single week, they're able to generate 10 different creatives um, based off these other photos, right? Different styles of still images that work fantastically well on cold as well as warm and hot audiences, um, especially for our niche for some for some reason. So let me quickly show you like how this kind of works. It's going to be nothing, you know, I can't show you too much because I don't want to give away too much of the product. However, I can show you like how many creators we are creating. And uh, I think that's going to be very insightful for you guys. And then I'm going to show you how we go ahead and deploy these into the ad account as well. Okay, guys, so we are in uh, our Google Drive, our company drive, and uh, this is what we do, right? So uh, essentially for us like what has been working really well um, across all parts of the marketing funnel for this particular brand has been still images calling out like the biggest value propositions that our product solves right like what will the customer get if they buy this product right we we have four different points and we go ahead and we just have boom 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 and fast shipping you know 365 days worth of you know warranties and all that kinds of stuff right but essentially go like going through right you can see we were able to, you know, this is just on a week by week basis, right? But every single day, right, we have this graphic designer who's going through and their main job essentially is just to go and create more and more ads as they go through, right? This is really, really important. And and this has just been absolutely game changing for us every single week, getting, you know, 10 new creatives, 10 new creatives that we can go ahead and test. And, you know, when we're spending a lot like four or $5,000 per day, this is so important because we have this crazy system in place right now. It doesn't leave us any room to get back to where we were uh, a little while ago, right? In terms of like the really poor sales and all of that kinds of stuff, right? So um, it just shows, right? How important it is to, no matter how good the sales are, to ne never get complacent because at any point, you know, your sales can really kind of just slump. And that's not a good thing. Like you can see here, like uh, our sales like really dropped. Um, from August all the way through till, you know, December, you're going to see kind of like this pivot, like this downward, this dip right here, right? And then we had to, we noticed that this is, oh gosh, we're in code red right here. We need to do something. Otherwise, you know, uh, we risk, you know, continuing to lose money, right? And then that's something that just absolutely we, we cannot afford. And this is just so, so important. So I want to really kind of show you guys exactly and, and stress how important this is um, for you guys who are looking to run ads. Now, once that system is in place, I want to show you next 
how this works in terms of in the ad account because it's sure it's great that you have a consistent flow of creatives it's great that you have you know all these ugc pieces coming through and you have this great system down but well how can we actually go ahead and test and i want to quickly show you that in our ad account and what has been working for us what pivots that we're starting to make um, when we're spending this much money uh, we make uh, pivots very quickly and something that was working early in january now is not working as well so i'm going to be jumping back and forth between this particular screen um, and in January and um, my ad account because I want to show you guys like how this is kind of come about. We're in our ad account and I want to kind of uh, draw your attention to three campaigns, right? What I want to show you is this graduate campaign, audience testing campaign, and then we have our creative testing campaign as well. Uh, so these are the main drivers, I would say, right? So like, let's say, let's just take the last 30 days and then let's just organize it between spend. And you're going to see like, like these three campaigns take up the majority of our overall spend. Creative testing, $54,000 over the last 30 days. Graduate campaign, which is kind of like going for the 50 day com uh, fifty conversions over the seven days, $44,000 once we've found proven winning audiences and winning creative combinations. And then also we've got our audience testing campaigns, which, you know, we're using winning creatives and we're going out and targeting brand new audiences, people that we've never targeted before. Now, this is the bread and butter kind of like the Josh back strategy that I've always used, right? And the one that I've always kind of advocated, right? Understanding that you need to test one variable at a time. And the biggest variable in most cases is going to be either your creative, your audience, that's pretty much it, right? Then you have, you know, the lesser priority ones, which is like ad copy, headline, all that kinds of stuff. But essentially those two creative and audience are the biggest thing so we should be kind of isolating those two variables and testing individually what we what we went ahead and did and this is how i've always run it we always run this creative testing campaign right this is where we test all of our creatives now when we do this though there is a bit of an issue because what we've noticed is that when i go here you can see like these are all just like all the different winning audiences that we've got and you're going to start to notice like lululemon is definitely one of the bigger ones and lululemon was our bread and butter kind of like our cash cow audience right this was something that always printed money for us always did well for us but for some reason you know in in the last couple of you know days in the last week essentially um this account started to not like this and i'm going to quickly just pull up my high risk conversions real quick because this just shows like how potentially unprofitable some of these were and it's going to be a, be a little bit eye-opening for you guys you can see here like in the last 30 days it was doing great right like overall like we got like 1.6 1.7 2.3 obviously some of these are just absolute bummers so they need to go they need, they need to go but I, I understand that there are some incorrect trackings here so what i like to do is have a look at okay how much ad spend have we spent and what is our total revenue for the day right and then kind of do a calculation based off that if it's higher than 1.6 or sorry 1.3 then I'm, I'm pretty happy and i won't make too many adjustments but when i see like red flags like this you know no sales coming through after or like losing 300 bucks per ad set essentially what i'm doing is i'm going ahead and tapering the balance down kind of limiting how much they're spending okay so this was the last 30 days right but let's just go back and have a look at the last seven days and i'm pretty sure that most of this right it, it just wasn't performing that well i'm pretty sure that it, it was yeah you can see here the majority of these ad sets actually dropped in terms of total quality right like we still have a few right but like this combat one you know this protein science one still wasn't doing well men's fitness still doing pretty decent which is not bad but grappling khabib you know uh, grappling again at cross caps test you know lululemon here testing the mul multiple advertiser multi-advertiser setting you know these are just not performing that well right so the last seven days has been a very quick shift in the sense that it just hasn't been doing that great so what has been working well because the way that i like to handle my ad accounts is i will go ahead and find winning audience uh, winning creators first right through guessing the audience right doing research and figuring out what's the best audience um next what i'm going to do is with those winning creatives i'm going to go out and find new audiences right so i'm graduating them into that new phase because we never ever want to rely on just a few ad sets and that's another thing that my complacency led to that's something that we'll never do again and then once that's done 
um, we found our winning audience and our winning creatives, we go ahead and we put them into a graduate campaign, which is this one specifically. And you can see here, like these are the winning creatives um, and you can see the budgets um, right here. These are ABOs, by the way, right? So they're spending, you know, $630 or $550 per day. And look at the return here, like out of nowhere, just in the last seven days, it just kind of like flopped. But um, over the last 30 days, it was doing much, much better, but it, it just absolutely flopped. What we naturally had to do is start to pivot. And uh, I remember, um, and I guess this is a really good talking point. People can teach you all kinds of strategies, right? Like they can teach you whatever. Every strategy has a potential to work. However, the most important thing to understand is that you, not every strategy will be applicable to your specific ad account. ABOs might work, CBOs might not work. Maybe, you know, dynamic creative testing campaigns will work. Maybe they won't. So in this particular ad account in the past, what we what helped us scale was actually using the dynamic creative testing setting at the ad set level. And that's what we've been doing in the last couple of days, actually, right? Like these were launched January 13th, January 14th, and this one, uh, January 12th, I think, right? So we went ahead and with those new creatives, essentially what we're doing is we're pushing them um, into a CBO campaign and we're splitting them between video and static. And then in terms of targeting, open super, super open, right? This store, you know, in the last, you know, from September or August, it's generated a million dollars, right? A lot of, a lot of data that Facebook can use. But when we gave Facebook more control here, that did this DCO, right? And it's just doing so good. Remember like when I was showing you the creative testing campaigns, it was, you know, one, one point something, two point something, but look at this 3.3. 3.9, sorry, 4.2, right? This is fantastic results. Our target, you know, if we get a CPA of $100, we are winning. But look at this, right? Like our CPA is a $70, so average of $74, right? Really, really good. So this is what is being working really well in our campaigns. And after knowing, uh, after seeing that and testing and willing to test that for a few days, we um, are now pretty much going back to using only DCTs, DCOs. You can see here, like this one here is doing a, a 10 times return on ad spend. So essentially what we're doing is if we get 10 new creatives uh, per week, right? Uh, still creatives, we go ahead and launch them here. And then with the, you know, all the new UGC pieces that we're getting in every month as well, we push them here as well. And then once we find those winners, we convert them into the post IDs, right? So in terms of like real posts, because right now uh, when you use dynamic creative testing, the setting, you don't have post IDs, right? Because Facebook is changing it depending on what they think will convert. But once we find a winning combination, um, you can essentially go ahead and relaunch the campaign with those specific variables, the winning creative, the winning headlines, the winning ad copy, all of that kinds of stuff and um, use the post ID. But this has guys been an absolute game changer in terms of our overall performance. It's just been, you know, we're on track to make 300 grand this month, right? Which is just insane. If you were to tell me, you know, it would be like this in the last, uh, you know, a couple of months, I guess it, I would have not maybe believed you because, you know, I, I was starting to get a little bit disheartened. But the reality was, was that it wasn't me that was getting disheartened. It was just that, like, I was getting lazy. And you can see, you know, this is just a clear result of, you know, hard work, right? It's just on an upward trajectory again, which is just fantastic. Um, I hope that this has helped you guys because the biggest thing, um, the biggest trip up that a lot of people have when, you know, running businesses um, and, and things start to work well, right? Is that we get complacent. We, we, we start to think like everything is peachy, everything is great. And when things hit the fan, right? When she's a fan, that's when we, we're like, oh, gosh, I made a big mistake and we have to go back and kind of scramble. But if we just had the enough awareness to understand that if we just can be consistently good rather than be occasionally great, we'll just be on this constant upward trajectory and we will never have to kind of be pushed into this pit of despair and, and anxiety and stress that, you know, the month of October kind of just brought on for us because it was a huge drop. It was $50,000 worth of uh, revenue. And that is um, not a joke in terms of you know, what, it can, what it means for the company, right? So I hope that you guys can take some learning from this. I hope that you guys can um, go ahead and start to look at all these new systems. Maybe in the future, I can break down the graphic system and the UGC system a little bit more and maybe even, even provide 
provide a referral for you guys. But for now, I think it's still a little bit too early. I don't want to give you guys anything that I can't be 100% sure that will work. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys can uh, took some really valuable information from this and go ahead and deploy into your own brands and your own lives. Um, for, so if you guys have any more questions, make sure you throw them down below. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe as well if you guys have any questions. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.